and it's something very important helping people to experience the Holy Spirit and helping them also to carry the power of the Holy Spirit to pray for people and, and this is all very important and uh, uh, I have after I experienced the Holy Spirit in 1998 the infilling of the Holy Spirit in 1998 I uh, when Carlos and Acondia from Argentina came to Hong Kong he laid hand on many people and he laid hand on me and I experienced a great power coming down upon me like electricity when he laid hand on me and I experienced great love of God so powerful that I was touched by the love of God uh, instantly and very powerfully I was so touched that I cried for a long time I uh, I felt being loved I felt peace I felt uh, uh, an experience almost like heaven and I smell a very mm, a sweet aroma a sweet smell <clears throat> that and that instantly changed my spiritual life and I said I didn't realize I can experience the Holy Spirit like that and I spent long time praying to God after that and then I uh, some people asked me to lay hand on them and then they experience power and touching of the Holy Spirit and uh, many people cried and they said that the, the inner hurts has been healed and uh, people also experience uh, healing of the, uh, of the body and of the uh, spirit and also the spiritual life is being revived and many people loved God much more after they experienced the infilling of the Holy Spirit and this has changed my ministry uh, I you know I uh, in the past I only uh, in my ministry it's mainly uh, the ministry of the Word of God and now it's also uh, ministry of the Word of God plus the work of the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit is not just in laying of hands on people but also in uh, when we uh, lead people to love God and worship God and they also experience uh, the, uh, the Holy Spirit when they love God with all the heart so I, I taught people to love the Lord the, uh, our God with all our heart all our mind all our soul all our strength and then they experience the Holy Spirit also and I have met people in uh, some churches that don't talk about the infilling of the Holy Spirit but this, some of these people spend long time praying and they also experience the power of God. So it's not just for people who uh, you know, have uh, laying on of hands, but also for anyone who spend long time praying to God and they can experience uh, the power of the Holy Spirit also. And it has helped me spiritually that and uh, since I learned to love the Lord my God with all my heart, all my soul, any moment now when I think of God instantly I can experience his his joy and his peace flowing through me and it's very encouraging because anytime I can experience his comfort and his strength and his guidance also and this is very helpful to me and uh, and and then I uh, raise up the people the spiritual life of people and help people to to love God more and this is very helpful in my ministry that I can help many people so uh, I encourage you all to hunger for the infilling of the Holy Spirit that you will say yes I, Lord I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit hallelujah and uh, and also I use it for evangelism I lay hand on people and ask them what they have experienced and then they told me that experience peace and or uh, uh, burdens go away and comfort to the body uh, some even experience joy or love and I tell them this is the work of God and I ask them do they want to be uh, blessed by God for the whole lifetime and then they are willing and then I would uh, and then I uh, tell them the gospel and lead them to believe in Jesus Christ and also for Christians I pray for them to experience the Holy Spirit and uh, uh, many of them experience the love that changed their life and also experience uh, peace and experience comfort to the body and, uh, 
and then they uh, and then their spiritual life is transformed and then I told them they can also uh, uh, be filled with the Holy Spirit continually and then they can pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit and then they can serve God with power so the Holy, the infilling of the Holy Spirit is very helpful in our own spiritual life and is very helpful in helping people to, uh, to have a uh, strong spiritual life and serve God and raise up people to serve God and, and bring people to Christ. So, uh, and I read from the Bible that it says that signs, that means miracles, will follow those who believe. So everyone who believes can have the Holy Spirit, can have, be filled with the Holy Spirit, and then they can lay hand on the sick and they will be uh, healed. So all people have the authority to lay hand on people. So this is something we can train people, except if they have still have evil spirit or they have emotional problem or problem, problems with sins, then they should be take care of this problem before they lay hand on people this, because it would affect it can affect the people they lay hand on if they are affected by by sins okay now uh, we'll uh, review some of the content of last time so we can experience the Holy Spirit uh, with the peace burdens remove and body and rest and comfort and love now we talked about this last time so I'm not going to repeat all this and then inner healing and physical healing and demons being driven out and it's all supported by scripture and then Jesus promised to give us the power of the Holy Spirit for evangelism in Acts 1 8 that will be his witnesses to the end of the world so this is a promise of Jesus and God wants to fill all people with the Holy Spirit and give them spiritual guidance so God doesn't just want uh, some people that I that God said I will pour out says God I will pour out my spirit on all flesh that he want all Christians to be filled with the Holy Spirit not just some Christians but it's very sad that many Christians did not understand the work of the Holy Spirit and then they uh, they reject the work uh, the infilling of the Holy Spirit and uh, what happened is they they still have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. They still are moved by the Holy Spirit to repent and trust in Jesus and obey Jesus. But they lack the power of the Holy Spirit. That the power of the Holy Spirit can give them power in praying for people, in leading people to Christ, in transforming people's life, and also in the guidance of the Holy Spirit to uh, teach us how to teach and teach us how to uh, serve God uh, more efficiently and also that uh, people experience the Holy Spirit will have this uh, the strong presence of God his love and his joy in him motivating him all the time so this is very very helpful in ministry and it's God's heart that all people will be filled with the Holy Spirit and then also uh, that that we can prophesy or see visions and dream dreams that uh, that he can give us supernatural guidance. Now, it's also true that there are false prophets in this world. There are some people who just look for money. We just want money. We, you know, uh, there, the fact that there are false prophets doesn't mean there cannot be real prophets. And it doesn't mean that people can really serve God with the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, even though some people are abusing the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it doesn't mean that the strong Christians, uh, Christians who are following God honestly, cannot have the power of the Holy Spirit to serve God. And this is one problem that caused the church to split. And what happened is Christians who don't experience the Holy Spirit powerfully when they are uh, facing persecution, it's harder for them to experience strength. Uh, and they didn't believe that God can help them uh, right away, easily, because they, uh, they think that many Christians, if they haven't experienced the Holy Spirit, they find the, Holy, uh, that find the work of God being far from them. So they uh, generally have uh, less guidance from God and less 
love and motivation from God and now there are some who pray much and then they have this power and the of the Holy Spirit but uh, there are many Christians who just have the head knowledge of God and they and they don't uh, they don't serve God with the power of the Holy Spirit and then and then many Christians don't know how to serve God they they cannot do anything for God but if we all believe that all Christians can be trained uh, that we can be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and then we can pray for people and then they can be healed and the life can be transformed uh, and then uh, that we can raise up people to serve God and raise up people to believe in Jesus then Christians will have more faith to serve God and uh, I I don't mean to say that uh, the uh, the Christians who have not experienced the infilling of the Holy Spirit cannot be used by God you can be used by God also but you can be used greater to a greater level if you uh, are filled with the Holy Spirit and have a very close relationship with God uh, and then then when you pray for people and then when you lead meetings you have more power and strength okay and Jesus promised to give us miracles so Mark 16 verses 15 on it talks about preach the gospel to all creature and then all who believe will be saved and then signs will follow those who believe so everyone can have these signs including casting out demons and speaking with new tongues and also uh, they lay hand on the sick and they will recover so uh, that all Christians can be trained to be able to lay hands on the sick but uh, now Christians who have sins and have evil spirits should cleanse their life first before they lay hand on people because just as the Holy Spirit can be transmitted uh, uh, can be transferred from one person to another through the laying on, on, on of hands since evil spirit came from angels the fallen angels and the fallen angels were also created by Father, Son and Holy Spirit so they are similar to the Holy Spirit in some ways that they can also be transmitted uh, through the laying on of hands so um, so when people have evil spirit or have serious sins or serious uh, uh, emotional problem when they lay hand on people uh, the uh, the bad influences in them or even the evil spirit can be transferred to other people so uh, the church should train people to live to have a close relationship with God and uh, take care of the sins and emotional problem and then uh, train them to lay hand on people so it, there should be a step of cleansing their life and uh, God gives us supernatural gifts the word of wisdom and words of knowledge that uh, uh, that generally people don't have that knowledge but when they are filled with the Holy Spirit they can sometimes know about the hearts of some people so this is a uh, uh, word of knowledge that they can, they can know uh, what is in the heart of some people uh, what is the needs of some people what are their physical needs and then uh, they use this uh, to bring people to Christ or to help them to take care of their problems and then uh, the Holy Spirit can give us faith and gifts of healing and works working of miracles prophecy and discerning of spirit uh, of evil spirit and uh, and different kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues so the Holy Spirit can give us different gifts these are just some examples and there are much more than these gifts listed here and you notice that these gifts listed here are many of them are supernatural the words of knowledge healing miracles prophecy and discerning of spirit and tongues all these are supernatural uh, now it's true that all the work of God is supernatural but uh, what I mean here is that these are you know some Christians don't believe that there can be healing there can be prophecy there can be discerning of evil, evil spirits so don't, they don't believe this uh, which they classify as more supernatural and but with the power of the Holy Spirit we can have these gifts also 
Okay, now this time uh, we'll continue with this. Uh, what I just talked about was from the last session. So being filled with the Holy Spirit, what does that mean? Now some people think they experience the power or love or healing when someone lay hand on them and then they are filled with the Holy Spirit. That's not necessarily true. Being filled with the Holy Spirit means a constant relationship with God, a constant infilling of the Holy Spirit, a constant uh, a strong presence of God in Him. That is uh, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And we look for that, that strong infilling of the Holy Spirit. And you know, some people experience the Holy Spirit when someone lay hand on them, but it's just for a moment. And they don't continue the strong relationship with God, and then they cannot keep the strong infilling of the Holy Spirit. So we need the strong infilling of the Holy Spirit. So what does that mean? Being filled with the Holy Spirit it means having a very intimate relationship with God. That uh, it's very close relationship that we worship with our spirit, whole heart, with all our mind, all our strength. That we can have. Uh, uh, we can experience Him much more. Now, compared to before the experience in 1998, when, I, uh, when Carlos and Acondia lay hand on me, uh, before that, and now it's very, very different. Now, any time I pray, I can experience His joy. Any moment I think of God, His joy will flow out. And I can experience His love coming upon me, and I experience power going through my body. And I also experience God guiding me in my teaching, in my writing. So all this is having an intimate relationship with God. And also I have continued uh, Okay, now someone asked me How to get the link every time actually you can just search in Facebook just search in Facebook um, global fire missions ministries and then you can always find it it's always uh, you know that's a account in Facebook global fire missions ministries if you cannot remember that just search for pastor yip uh, but the quality there of the video is different because in Global Fire Missions Ministry is uh, it's, uh, sharper because we're using the OPS tool. Okay, so we can have a close relationship with God and then we can be touched by the Holy Spirit and motivated by the Holy Spirit and we can see miracles uh, very often. And then turning away from sins, that we have a motivation to turn from sin. Now, there are some people who, who experience the Holy Spirit and they don't turn away from the sins. It's fact. It's a fact. Because some people don't obey God. So we want to learn to obey God. We want to learn to, uh, uh, to have a close relationship with, with Him and hate sins. Not only repent of the sins, but hate sins because sins are very destructive. And sins will steal things from us. Uh, Satan will use sins to uh, to come into our life and steal things from us. So we want to say no to sins. When Christians sin or when ministers sin, what happens is then they are uh, that what happens is then what they do doesn't please God. And it's in vain that they serve God in many ways because if they serve God for money, if they serve God for their own purposes, uh, then God is not pleased with them. So when we serve God and sin at the same time, God is not pleased with us. Then His ministry is in vain. So we want to say no. Say no to all sins. Okay, and then follow great God's will and the Great Commission. So we um, want to, uh, when we experience the Holy Spirit, that give us the power to enter the perfect will of God. As I said, uh, you know, Christians who have not experienced the infilling of the Holy Spirit, if they spend a long time praying and really submit to God and turn away from all the sins and give their life to God, they can also enter God's 
will. But when people are filled with the Holy Spirit, we have a stronger presence of God. That uh, when we pray for people, when we try to raise up people's spiritual life, it's much more powerful and effective. That I've seen this happen many, many times. I've seen this happen many times. That, um, that I raise up people to serve God. Uh, when I pray for them and then they said, wow, this is wonderful that we can experience God like that. And then I said, you can serve God when you pray more and obey God. And then you pray for people and teach the teachings of God. And then you can serve God with power. And then some of these people are transformed. So it's easier for us to enter God's perfect will. And it's great commission that we can bring more people to Christ. Now after the Pentecostal revival, starting about uh, 1906 in Los Angeles uh, 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 on, uh, in a building on Azusa Street. After that great revival there, there were many missionaries sent out. Many of them went out to different parts of the world and then they, uh, they served as missionary and they brought many people to Christ and it, it brought a great revival, uh, the Pentecostal revival to many parts of the world. And then dedicating our life to God. Now, so if we want to keep an infilling of God, if we want to follow, we want to turn away from sin and follow God's will and do the Great Commission and dedicate our life to God and follow God and doing things for God's glory and not for our own glory. So experience the Holy Spirit is not just an experience. It's not just a one-time experience. It's a continual, total dedication to God. So I hope we all want to dedicate our life to God and then God is happy with us uh, and then God is happy with us that we are serving him with an honest heart with a heart of love and obedience uh, that we serve God with the power of the Holy Spirit and God is very happy so it's not power that we look for power is just a tool what we look for is to be able to follow God's will to obey Him and glorify Him and bless people. That is what the infilling of the Holy Spirit is for. Now I have heard there are people who want just for, want money from the ministry. They just concentrate money and controlling people and this is not glorifying God. And I, I pray that these people will repent and really say we want to serve God and we want to bless people. We don't just want to raise up ourselves. When we bless people and we love God, God will bless us and raise us up. We don't have to do things to, to raise us up. God will provide for us. God will open the ways for us so that we can serve God with power. So I hope all people, you know, all Christians hunger for the infilling Holy Spirit and also hunger for serving God with an honest heart, with a heart of love. Okay, now, so... Uh, very important, how can we be filled with the Holy Spirit? And how to keep the infilling of the Holy Spirit is following John 4.24. God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. So how can we be filled, how can we be filled with the Holy Spirit continually is worship in spirit, in our whole spirit, in our whole soul and spirit. And um, Okay. Okay, some some people ask for me, so please every time uh You can save this. Uh, save the link or just search for uh, Global Fire Missions Ministry and then you can find it. So, okay, now how to worship God with spirit, in spirit and in truth? It, 
includes serving God with our soul and our spirit. That the soul includes our mind, our mind, our will, and our feelings. Uh, generally, we believe that the soul includes our mind, our thinking. So our thinking agrees with God's word and uh, with God's will. And then our will, we decide to follow God and obey God totally and submit to God totally. And feelings, build up positive feelings toward God. Now, because when you know people has, we all have feelings. And when we love someone, we have feeling toward the person. And when we love God, we have feelings toward God too. Now, if a person says he loves God, but then he doesn't like God, then, then he doesn't really love God. When we love God, how the work of the Holy Spirit, Spirit can help us to experience God more, to, uh, to love God more, to um, serve God more efficiently. And so this here, um, I'm going to rest oh, okay. So it's very important for us to experience the, uh, the Holy Spirit and to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and how can we do that? So uh, I briefly summarized what I said before uh, very quickly. Now, I'm sorry I did not start the online uh, live broadcast earlier. So people, people can experience the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit by the peace, the burdens removed, and bodies we can rest uh, in, uh, we can feel comfort and rest in our body and love, that love can flow into us and he inner healing and physical healing and demons being driven out. So people can experience the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus promised to give us power so that we can do evangelism to the whole world. And also, God wants all people to be filled. In Acts 2, 17, God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. He wants all flesh to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And He promised to give us miracles in Mark 16, 15, that, uh, that all the signs will follow those who believe. And this will happen while we go out to the whole world to preach the gospel. And then miracles will follow those who believe that they can cast out demons, speak new tongues, and lay hand on the sick, and they will recover. And also, 1 Corinthians 12 talk about different supernatural spiritual gifts, words of wisdom and words of knowledge and faith and gifts of healing. That uh, Paul never said that these gifts will stop. There are some people said that the, this uh, supernatural spiritual gifts will stop, but the Bible never said that. Uh, when when, uh, when Paul talked about this spiritual gifts, he never said that it will, it will stop. And then he gave us faith and gifts of healing, that we can bring healing to people and miracles and prophecy and discerning of spirit and different kinds of tongue and interpretation of tongues. Okay, and then um, being Filled with the Holy Spirit is not just a one-time experience. It is a continual, a continual relationship with God and obedience to God. It includes intimate relationship with God that we can experience Him any time we pray. We can experience His love and joy and motivation from Him all the time. And being filled with the Holy Spirit also means that we turn away from sins. There are some people who you know, who serve God, they says they serve God, they say they serve God, but then they follow sinful ways, then what happens is they are not really serving God. God is not happy with them. So if we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we want to serve God uh, with obedience, that we turn away from all sins and hate sins. And we want to follow God's will, to obey God's will and His great commission, and dedicate our life to God, that we submit to God totally, and doing things for God's glory and not for our own glory. So being filled with the Holy Spirit is not just an experience. It's dedication of the whole life to God and following all the teachings in the Bible and doing the Great Commission to bring people to Christ and raise up their spiritual life, teaching them to obey everything Jesus has taught us. And in order to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to keep the infilling of the Holy Spirit, we need to Follow John 4, 24, that God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. 
So we need to worship God with sp in spirit and in truth. The whole person need to worship God. And our spirit will include our soul and our spirit. Our soul includes the mind, the will, and the feelings. That the whole mind will agree with God and with the Bible and say, yes, God is good. God is the only way. God is the best way. And God can bless us in every way. And following God is the best for everyone. Uh, and we can have eternal life. And the will that this, we decide to follow God and obey God totally, submit to God totally, dedicate our life to God. Now, many Christians, they just want to follow their own ways. And this is not pleasing to God. We want to really follow God and uh, dedicate our whole life to God and be willing to submit to Him. And then that way our whole life will be blossom and go higher and higher when we uh, our whole will is for God and not for the world because now we need to work we need to earn money to support ourselves uh, anyone need to do that but those are not our goals our goals is to glorify God no matter what we do when we are ministers or when we work in a secular world whatever we do we still want to dedicate our life to God and and submit to God and our feelings now, when we love God, we want to have uh, strong feelings toward God. We want to love Him and like Him. Now, if we love someone, we'll have strong feelings toward that person. So when we love God, we want to have strong feelings toward God too, that we like God, we want to follow God, we want to obey Him. And when we think of God, we are pleased that, uh, with God. And then we worship with our spirit. That means worship with the whole inner being, being, the whole person, the mind, the will, and the feelings, and the whole spirit. Worship God. Uh, this is very, uh, very important. Uh, many people pray and worship just with the mind. They just say, "God, please help me. I need, need I need money. I need help. I need health." Uh, uh, and so they just ask for help. But when we worship God, we want to worship from the whole spirit. We appreciate God. We love God. We like God. We thank God. And then we worship with the whole spirit, the whole person. That way, uh, we can experience Him much more and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, for some people, it's hard for them to, uh, to worship in the whole truth. Now, um, it takes time to learn to worship God with our whole spirit, a whole soul and spirit. It takes time. And I can describe it this way, that we, now if you think of someone you like, that you really say, yeah, I want to see him. I want, I'm very happy with him. And when I think of him, I'm very happy. So that our whole soul, our whole spirit go towards that person. That is what I mean by worshiping God in spirit and in truth. The whole person that we like God so much, I hunger for God, I want God, I want to obey Him, I want to glorify Him. So whole being reach out to God. Now, it takes time to learn this. Uh, what we can do is we learn to like God. We think of all the good things God has done for us. We like God and we say, I like you, I thank you for everything, I think of your creation, I think of the Holy Spirit inside me working in my life, I thank God you are so wonderful, I thank God you are doing all these wonderful things to me. So we thank God for everything, that we like Him very much. That way we can be filled with the Holy Spirit much uh, more. Um, let me try to describe this more. Uh, like. If you like some food, sometimes you would think about the food or dream about the food. So we want to have these same feelings toward God. We dream about God. We think about God. God, I like you. I want to be with you. I hunger for you. I want to be with you. Because everything good in the world, all the food, all the beautiful nature, our health, uh, the Holy Spirit that works in our life, all this came from you. You are so wonderful. So I like you with all my soul. I worship you. I adore you. I, I really want to lift up your holy name. I want to glorify your holy name. It's flow from the whole, the whole person. 
It takes time to learn to do that. And first we can learn to believe that God is loving us. God loves me. God is with me. God is blessing me. God is with me all the time. So we can all believe that God is with us all the time. He is blessing us all the time. That way uh, that we are more connected to God. The more we like God, the more we thank God. Okay, and then three kinds of prayer to build up the relationship with God. The prayer of grace, prayer of worship, and the prayer interactive prayer. Prayer of grace is declaring the grace of God. God is loving me. God is laying His hand upon me. God is blessing me. God is thinking about me. God is, has a wonderful plan in my life. So all the things God has done for me, then we'll say, God is doing all these things. Thank God He's loving me. This prayer of grace will help us to live in peace and love and joy. Now many Christians don't believe that God is loving them. They think that God is far away. But the Bible tells us God is with us all the time. He is in front of us and behind us and He's laying His hand upon us. And uh, even a mother can, you know, a mother doesn't forget her, uh, her baby. But even when a mother forgets her baby, He doesn't forget us. That He think about us all the time. So the prayer of grace saying, God is loving me. God is blessing me. And then the prayer of worship is, I love you, I adore you, I need you, I want you, I glorify you, I depend on you. And then the interactive prayer is combining the above two kinds of prayer. Whenever we pray that, whenever we pray to you, God, I know that you are happy with me and you are blessing me. When I worship you, you are pleased with me and you will respond to my needs and raise me up to a higher level. So. Whenever we pray, we know that God is blessing us, God is with us, God is blessing us. That is believing in, uh, believe the promises in the Bible that He always responds to us. He always responds to us when we pray to Him, when we obey Him, when we love Him. He's always happy. So, now every day I pray these prayers many times. I would say, when I get up, I would say, God is happy with me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're happy with me. Whenever I pray to you, you're very happy with me. You listen to my prayer and you bless me. And you have a plan to bless me today. So when we believe that, then we have joy and strength to face everything uh, in front of us. And then when we pray for people, when we lay hand on people, first we need to build up a strong relationship with God and turn away from all sins. Sins can bring evil spirit because sins will be, uh, uh, will be a foothold for the devil. So we want to build a strong relationship with God and hate the sins and repent from the sins and turn away from the sins. There are many people who say that they, they repent, but they don't hate the sin and they don't turn away from the sins. They, they repent and say, I'm, I'm sorry, I have lust, I have uh, greed for money. But then after the prayer, they still have greed for money and still have lust. That we say, I hate lust because lust is destroying my life. I hate greed. I hate laziness. I hate uh, ungodly anger. And so I hate this sin so that I turn away from all these sins. Then, uh, so our life has a close relationship with God and then uh, we are cleansed from sins and then we have a stronger presence of God. Two, we can pray and sing to, and lead people to believe that God is loving them and help them to love God. We don't need to shout. Now, so we can pray and sing to lead people to believe that God is loving us. Now, this is a teaching I hope we all will be doing that will teach people when, whenever we, we trust in God and love God, God is very happy with us, God will bless us. So we teach people and tell them that when you pray, when you honest, pray with an honest heart, a sincere heart, God is always happy. So whenever we pray with a sincere heart, God, I love you, I adore you, God will respond. God will come to us. So when we lead people to pray, to experience the Holy Spirit, so here talking about how to help people experience the Holy Spirit to bring them to Jesus. Because when we pray for even non-Christians, when they have problems and needs and they want to experience God, and then we tell them, open the heart to God and think of God as blessing you. He's blessing you right now. He wants to bless you. So hunger for God 
and then close your eyes and relax and then we lead them to to worship God and think of the good things of God and then we can lay hand on them to experience the Holy Spirit and then ask them have they experienced anything if they have experienced something uh, the work of God and then we say this is from God so it's very wonderful do you want God to bless you and then if he wants to then we can tell them the gospel and lead them to believe in Jesus and also when we uh, pray for Christians we can tell them God is so wonderful he can uh, help you to experience him so when we pray for Christians and ask them what they experience and they say they experience peace and love and joy and or healing and then we say God can use you also to pray for other people so this is how we can raise up the spiritual life of people and raise up people to serve God and and in the process first we want to build up a strong relationship with God ourselves and then we want to pray and sing and lead people to to think of God as loving them it's not uh, first some people it's hard to love God first but tell them God is loving us God loves the whole world God loves you and so when we pray we can say God is loving us now thank you Lord thank you Jesus for loving us we want to come to you and you're very happy that we come to you you're very happy that we trust in you and seek you and then when we come to you you for sure will bless us Lord we thank you for that we hunger for you we want you so we first declare the love of God and then we worship God we hunger for God we love God uh, so that way uh, when people believe in God's love they are more relaxed and they can experience the Holy Spirit easier and we don't need to shout now uh, it doesn't hurt to shout but shouting is not the only way there are many people who think that when they shout then people can experience the Holy Spirit now it's true sometimes because shouting can wake up people and give them a shock and then they suddenly open uh, it can help in that way but it's not the shouting that does the work it's that because when people open up the heart so it's more important for us to to tell them God is loving you right now so when you hunger for God you say I want God I need God then God will come to bless you so it's very important for them to know that God is loving them this is more important than shouting and then number three don't push people some people they lay on people they push people and uh, to make them fall down now falling doesn't help falling doesn't help it's the work of the Holy Spirit inside helps when people experience peace and joy and love uh, and uh, transformation and healing and demons driven out that helps now when people fall down very often they also experience the power of the Holy Spirit but if we just push people and push them fall down to, uh, it that doesn't help and some people push people when they pray for people because they want other people to see that they they have power and people will fall down when they pray for people now this is seeking their own glory God doesn't like that so I hope we all understand we serve God to please God not to make people admire us so if people have this heart I want to pray for people and people fall down and it shows that I have the power of God that is glorifying themselves so we don't want to push people to fall down uh, when they fall down naturally we should have people catch us to help them lie down and relax and enjoy the presence of God but we don't push people and in situation when there is no catcher sometimes I even pull the pe person back so that uh, or help the person fall down slowly so that it won't hurt the person uh, we don't serve God to show people we don't want to get the attention of people we want to uh, to glorify God said so that people will say God is wonderful and want to draw people to follow God when people are pushed to fall down they don't see that that is the work of God they just say that this pastor just pushed me to fall down and then uh, it it just take away the work of God okay number four we can ask them if they have experienced the Holy Spirit to help them remember the experience so if they have ex most people experience peace and comfort to the body and burdens go away these are the three things that people experience most peace calmness inside and the burdens go away 
the pressure go away and the comfort to the body. So if people s say, I don't know what I've experienced, you can ask them, do you f how do you feel in your body and, and in your uh, soul, in your heart? Did you feel, experience anything? And then uh, sometimes we need to ask them, did you experience peace? Do you experience burdens go away? Did you experience comfort to your body? And then if they say yes, then we tell them, this is what the Bible promised, to give us peace and burdens go away and the comfort to the body that we'll, uh, we have. This Bible verse earlier that I, I sh show you the Bible verses from last time that the peace, John 14, 24, the Bible talks about that. And the burdens go away, that is from Matthew eleven twenty eight, And body in rest and comfort is Psalm 16, 9, 8 and 9. And Romans 5, 5 talks about the love of God, how we can experience the love of God. And inner healing in Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 3. And physical healing is uh, Isaiah 53, 5. And then demons being driven out, Mark 6, uh, 16, verse 17. So these are some experiences people can have. And then if they experience that, we tell them that this is from God and you have experienced that. Do you want God to bless you? Okay, so we ask them if they experience the Holy Spirit. And then experience the Holy Spirit can help people in these areas. Um, okay, let me go back to here. So when we ask them if they experience the Holy Spirit, and uh, if they say yes, they experience peace, joy, burdens go away, comfort to the body, or healing, uh, or power going through them, or demons driven out, then we tell them, this is God working in you. Do you want God to work in your whole life and bless your whole life? And then if, it's, if he's a non-Christian, then we tell them the gospel. Jesus has died for you. He has paid for the sins. He is the Son of God coming to earth. He's also God. He comes to earth and died for our sins. Do you want God to give, us, to give you eternal life so that you can go to heaven forever? And also now in this life you experience the help of God and the blessings of God. If the person is willing, then we tell them, uh, Jesus has died for you. And when we repent of our sins and trust in Jesus, then we have eternal life. So we, we, we lead the people to trust in Jesus, to uh, believe in Jesus. And if it's, a non, if it's a Christian, then we tell them you experience the work of God. And then if you hunger for God and pray more and take care of sins in your, pro in your life and spend more time praying to God, your whole life will go higher and higher. Do you want to be used by God? So we can uh, help them to become uh, spiritually stronger. You can serve God. Do you want to serve God? And you can serve God with power. You can pray for people. Can, people can experience the power of God. Do you want to be used by God? If you want to be used by God, you can uh, love God more, spend more time praying. And, and then after you take care of different problems, you can also pray for people. So this is how praying for people can help them to believe in Jesus and also to help them uh, change uh, uh, that the spiritual life is revived. And also it can help people to have faith in God's work because when they experience the work of God, they, uh, they have faith that God can do great things in them also, that they can be used by God. Now in my ministry, I have seen many, many people experience the Holy Spirit. And uh, I will uh, talk about that uh, a little later. Uh, first I'll, ex I'll explain these uh, slides. Okay, experience the Holy Spirit can help people in these areas to experience God and His work, so they can experience God Himself, His peace, His love, His presence, and His work. All the things that God works in our life, that change our life. And some people will see visions. Some people, I have even prayed for people and they went to heaven and they saw God and then God spoke to them and comfort them and give them strength. And uh, it helped people to appreciate God and believe in God, that they will say, 
wow, God is so wonderful. They appreciate God more and they say, thank God that you can work in my life in such wonderful way. And they will have stronger faith in God and they will say, yes, it's better to follow God. Now also, uh, I want to say this, like uh, when we have children, uh, many children in this world, they grow up in the church, but then after they grow up, they leave the church. They don't have a strong faith in God. How can we help the children to have strong faith in God? First, the pastor and the parents can pray for the children. And then the children experience the Holy Spirit and we tell them, this is the work of the Holy Spirit that you have experienced. And you keep praying, you know, you ask, we ask the children to pray themselves and they ex ask them what they have experienced. And they say, we experience love and joy and peace. And then we tell them, this is God working in your life. So keep praying and then you can experience Him much more. And then they pray more and then it will keep the relationship with God and they know that God is real and they can experience God. Because many Christians don't believe that they can experience God. They don't believe that God is right here. But when we experience the Holy Spirit, we know that God is right here. So it will help the relationship with God. And also, we can help people experience inner healing and bodily healing. That they can experience healing of the heart, of all the hurts in the past. Uh, and also experience body healing. That the body is healed. And some people experience instant, instantaneous healing. Sometimes people experience gradual healing. And it will build up the love and zeal for God. They will have a stronger love for God. And zeal, uh, zeal, they become zealous for the Lord. They want uh, to serve God and want to love God. And it will drive out the evil spirit and to guide people in their lives. God, the Holy Spirit will guide them to uh, speak to them or give them thoughts and to receive spiritual gifts and prophetic words that uh, we can continue to receive spiritual gifts. Many of my teachings came from the work of the Holy Spirit. It continue to uh, guide me in my teaching. So I thank God for that. And many people, they love God more and spend more time praying. They find that God guides them more and more. And, uh, and then they can enter ministry, some people when they have the calling, when they have the calling to serve God, that after ex they experience the Holy Spirit, they can enter ministry. And how to be filled with the Holy Spirit continually. Now this is very important, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit continually. First, repent and turn away from all sins. The first point is hate sins and repent, I'm sorry for my sins. Now whenever we think of our sins, we should say, Yes, Lord, I've sinned against you. Please forgive me. And I hate the sins. I don't want to sin again. I really don't want to commit the sins again. That way, it will help people to turn away from the sins. And uh, that, you know, then the Holy Spirit reminds us. And then when we obey the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is, is pleased with us and who will bless us. But if people continue to stay in sin, he cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, some people, they continue in sin, in sin and then they still pray for people and there is power. Uh, you know, God doesn't take away the power, but it doesn't mean God is pleased with them. So we want to say, Lord, I want to turn away from all my sins. And to be filled with the Holy Spirit continually, we want to love and follow the Bible. Now, some people experience the Holy Spirit and they forget about the Word of God. We need the Word of God. We want to love God and obey Him, obey the Bible. We want to read the Bible. We want to understand the Bible because the Bible contains a lot of promises and the work of God. And then we want to believe that God wants to fill us. So faith is very important that we believe that. that we have stronger faith in God, that we believe that uh, God is um, blessing us. When we pray to God, He's not far from us. When we pray to God, God is loving me. God is right here now. So in order to be filled with the Holy Spirit, we want to turn away from sins and follow the Bible and believe, have faith in God. And four, spend long hours loving God and praying. So spend as much time as possible to love God and worship God. It's not just asking for things. We don't need to continue to ask. Uh, Jesus said, you know, there are many people who just 
keep praying. Uh, they think that they keep praying and then they will get what they want. Now this is talking about people asking for blessings. Now we can ask for blessings, but we don't need to ask for blessings all the time. But we want to spend more time loving God and praising God. In the book of Revelation and in, in the Psalms, we can see there is continual praise and worship. In the book of Revelation, where it talks about heaven, it's full of praise and worship continually. So we want to spend long time, when we spend long time loving God with all our spirit, not just with the mind, but the whole person, loving God, worshiping God, and then we can be filled with the Holy Spirit much easier. And obey God when we want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, we want to obey God in every area, especially the Great Commission. Now for many people, they, they want to obey God in the church, in the uh, churchly things, but they don't obey God in loving their spouse. They fight with the spouse, they yell at the spouse, and this, every kind of sin, we need to turn away, and we need to obey God in the family, in the place of work, in the church, in our neighborhood, everywhere we go, we want to obey God. And then six, take care of problems in our life. Any problems, uh, if people have emotional problems, have depression, it, they cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit because they are all, always unhappy. And then the, the depression will block the work of God. And laying on of hands by a Spirit-filled person and Spirit-filled meetings are helpful. Okay, so it's helpful to be to have spirit-filled pastors and leaders uh, or Christians who lay hand on us is helpful. But we need to be careful because there are false prophets. Now there are more real prophets than false prophets, but there are false prophets. And there are people who serve God for money. We don't want these people to lay hand on us. When these ministers just talk about money all the time, just talk about money, we don't want them to lay hand on us because their heart is on money, not on God. So we, uh, but there are uh, Christians and pastors who are, who dedicate their whole life to God and love God and they are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and they lay hand on us. We can experience the power of the Holy Spirit much stronger. And also a whole group of Christians loving God and praising God continually will help us all to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So uh, it's helpful uh, to be laid hand on and also in spirit-filled meetings. Now in spirit-filled meetings, uh, it's more important to learn to love God and believe God's love rather than just shouting. I've seen many prayer meetings, people just shout and walk around and shout and shout and shout. And now it might help some people because it's hard for them to worship in the spirit. But if we learn to worship from the spirit, it's like our whole spirit go up to God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. The whole spirit, the, our spirit ascend to God. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. When we hunger for God and our whole spirit ascend to God, then we can be filled with the Holy Spirit instantly. So we, uh, so we want to learn to worship God from our whole spirit. It's not just shouting. So these seven points are how we can be filled with the Holy Spirit continually. So turn away from sins, follow the Bible, and have faith in God, and also spend long time loving God and praying to God. And now even when we are doing other things, when we are cooking, when we are cleaning, when we are walking, we can be praising God all the time. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And sometimes we don't need to say it. Just loving God from our heart and like God from our heart is also prayer. Oh Lord, I love you. I love you. I worship you. I adore you from the heart that also can bring the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Now, sometimes I demonstrate that and pray for people 
I did not say anything. I just love God. And then the person will experience the Holy Spirit. So we don't need to shout now. It's, uh, it, it doesn't hurt to shout, but it's not necessary that when we love God, people can experience His presence. And then, so spend long time loving God. Even when we are doing other things, we love God all the time. And obey God in every area and take care of problems. And then laying on, a, on of hands and spirit-filled meetings are helpful. So these are seven keys how to keep a stronger anointing. And also in a church, if there is a whole group of people praying all the time, that will bring a strong infilling of Holy Spirit. That we spend more time loving God and praising God. Okay, so um, so now we finish this uh, session on uh, work of the Holy Spirit. That um, that infilling of Holy Spirit is very helpful, and it's helpful to raise up people's spiritual life. And uh, I pray that we all will hunger for this. We don't hunger for just the power, we hunger for God Himself. Because when God comes, then the power of the Holy Spirit will come, the work of God will come. So it's not hungering for power. Some people just hunger for power. And also when some people pray for other people, they just say, power, power, fire. Now, it's not, it's not totally wrong. But it's better to draw attention to Jesus. Jesus, we love you. Instead of saying power, fire, then they're just paying attention to power and to fire instead of paying attention to God Himself. So we want to build up the relationship with God. Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you. We worship you. We adore you. We love you. We want to follow you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We worship you. We adore you. Thank you, Jesus. So learn this kind of prayer and then we can be filled with the Holy Spirit much more. Okay, now, um, now these are questions, but I see that um, there are some people uh, saying there's a problem with network, but that's uh, that is in that's your local problem. Now we we'll go through the questions here now. Help people to ho experience the Holy Spirit. So explain how we can exp experience the Holy Spirit with these verses. So how does these verses help us to understand that we can experience God? That John fourteen twenty seven says that that peace He gives to us. So God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit works together. When Jesus said, I give you peace, the Holy Spirit also gives us peace. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. So He can give us peace. And, and then all the you who are uh, burdened, heavy laden, come to me and I'll give you rest. So this Bible verses tell us that we can experience rest and comfort. So uh, the Bible tells us that God is very real. We can experience Him. Um, I think at this time I want to talk about some uh, some ways I have helped people and pray for people and how it helped my ministry to encourage to encourage you all that uh, if you love God more that similar things can happen to you okay I went to South Africa and if you Go online and search for South Africa Pastor Yip. You can find my videos in South Africa and actually in different parts of Africa and also in different countries in the world. And, and, and there were two videos in South Africa uh, when I went there. A sister there told me that the day I arrived, the night before the day I arrived, she had a dream and saw me there in that dream. And she, uh, in the dream, she was being chased by someone and she was in fear and she ran. And then she uh, ran to a house and then she looked inside and there was a Chinese boy 
Now in South Africa, there were not many Chinese. And she saw a Chinese boy and asked the boy to let, him, let her come in. And then when she went in, she saw a group of Chinese praying together. And, and then she saw me. And then I asked her, can I pray for you? And then she said, yes. And then the moment I lay hand on her, on her she experienced uh, joy and love. She experienced great love. And then she cried. Uh, and then, uh, oh, I'm sorry, she didn't cry. She was, she was laughing in a dream. And then she woke up and she was still laughing. And then that day I arrived at South Africa. And then, and then I also asked her, can I pray for you? And then she said, yes. And then when I prayed for her, she, um, she experienced love of God and the joy of the Lord. And she was rejoicing. And you can see in the video that she was rejoicing. Um, so this is something that happened uh, that before I arrived, that God showed this lady about what uh, that I would come and then she would experience the love of God and the joy of the Lord. And also there are many people I pray for that experience healing. There was one family, uh, the sister, I mean the daughter, came to our uh, church and she was already an adult. And she said, my mother had serious sickness. And uh, the doctor has said that uh, uh, she won't recover. And she asked, uh, the daughter asked me to pray for her mother. So I went to her their home and prayed for her. And then after the prayer, I asked her, what, uh, did you experience anything? And I usually ask the word experience because the Bible says we can experience God. So, uh, so uh, we can experience, uh, so ask her, uh, did you experience anything? It's, you know, it's okay to ask people that whether you experience something when we pray for you. Now, some people don't understand experience, and we can ask, did you feel anything? And then she said, experience comfort. And then I said, do you want to believe in Jesus? She said, no. She said, I have been worshiping Buddha for many years. I don't want to turn away from Buddha. And so she refused to believe in Jesus. But I still, but I still continue to um, visit her a few times, but she still did not believe. And then... I was too busy and then I did not go for half a year. And then suddenly one day I received a message. The daughter asked me to go because the mother asked for me. She said, the mother suddenly said, why didn't Pastor Yip come today? Now I haven't uh, visited her for half a year and suddenly God caused her to remember me. And then I went there and then I lay hand on her and Actually, every time I lay hand on her, she was lying on the bed she, because she was very sick. And then after the prayer, I asked her, did, she, uh, what, uh, did you experience anything? She said, I experienced comfort. And I asked her, did Buddha help you uh, experience anything? She said, no. Then I said, do you want to believe in the real God or in the false God? She said, I want to believe in the real God. And then she believed in Jesus and she was willing to be baptized and she was also willing to take down. She, I asked her, is it okay for me to take down all the idols? She said, yes. And I took down all the idols. And after that, the daughter told me that she now keep telling the family, believe in Jesus. Jesus is really good. Don't follow Buddha. So the whole family, many of them turned to Jesus. Actually, when I visited her a number of times, I prayed for the whole family also. And every one of them experienced uh, uh, the Holy Spirit. So this is how I serve God. I help many people to experience the Holy Spirit and help them to believe in Jesus. And, and this lady, the doctor said, she should suffer greatly before she died. But what happened was she did not have much suffering before death. She was all, pe all peaceful and in comfort and uh, she did not have great pain at all. And the doctor has said that uh, she might have to use morphine to reduce the pain, but she did not need that. And the, and the children asked the doctor, why didn't she have much pain? And the doctor said, I don't know. According to her condition, 
uh, because of the kidney failure and other problems, she should have great pain, but she did not. So this is wonderful work of God. Uh, so I'm, I'm saying when we trust in God, great things can happen. I have many videos online of people experiencing the Holy Spirit and it transformed their spiritual life. So I hope that we all uh, will follow God and, and obey God and uh, that really we let God work in our lives and let God uh, use us. That we want to have a close relationship with God. Our life can be used greatly by God. And this motivates me to pray more, to dedicate my life to God more. Because I see that after I experience the Holy Spirit, my whole ministry is totally different. I have helped so many people to be uh, spiritually revived and I brought many people to Christ and I trained many people and I see that I can do much more things for God than before and I can also enjoy God much more. So I will never turn back to a ministry without the power of the Holy Spirit. I will continue to enjoy God. I want to serve God uh, under the power of the Holy Spirit and not to serve God just, you know, with, uh, serve God without the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's totally different. Uh, and to summarize how we can serve God with the power of the Holy Spirit, which we talked about earlier, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And that is very important, how we can be, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit, that we continue to turn away from all sins and hate sins, and to love and follow the Bible. So first is sins, turn away from sin and the Bible and have faith, believe that God really wants to fill us. So when we pray, we don't say, God, where are you? But we say, Lord, you're right here. And then when we really love God, we can experience His love and joy. And we say, Lord, you're right here. You're blessing me right now. You're with me now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And have faith. And when I pray for people too, I have faith that God will work in people's life. And Spend long hours loving God and praying. So spend long time loving Him and worshiping Him. God, you're so wonderful. God, you're so good. And we like Him. Learn to like God. Lord, I like you. I need you. I want you. I hunger for you. So we have good feelings toward God. And spend the longer we spend coming to God, the, uh, the stronger is the presence of God. And, th and there are some people who are feel very powerfully with the Holy Spirit because they spend long time praying and obey God in every area and never, you know, uh, whenever we know any sin, we want to take care of the sins. We don't want to serve God for money. We won't, don't want to have any uh, uh, part in any sin, in lust, in adultery, fornication, or uh, greed for money, or hurting people's heart. So we don't want to sin in any of this area, and we take care of problems in our lives, uh, any problem that affects us, and lay hand on people, and then we can be filled with the Holy Spirit much more. And then, and then this very important part, how can we pray for people when we pray for people that we want to uh, first build up a strong relationship with God. We believe that God is right here. God wants to bless me. So I thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I need you, Lord. The more we build up, build up the faith in God, the more we'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. So we want to build up the strong relationship with God. And then, and when we pray for people, we spend, uh, we pray in a relaxing way to enjoy God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus loves me. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus loves me. So we want to bring people to enter the love of God, enjoy God. And then we lay hand on people. When we lay hand on people, uh, when we practice praying for people, sometimes we can begin to sense the presence of God. I can sense the presence of God when I pray. I can feel power going through me. And when I stand close to a person who, are, who is open to the Holy Spirit, 
I can feel power between us. I can feel power, the, the power of God between us. I can feel a stronger presence of God when I pray for someone who has faith. And when I lay hands on people, I can feel power going through the fingers. And I can feel some power over the, uh, the, the person. And also I can see the person sway. Now this is helpful when we see. Now what is the biblical support for that? In Revelation 1.17, John the Apostle saw Jesus in a glorious way and then he fell down. So in the presence of God, people can fall down. And then in uh, Acts chapter 9, Paul was persecuting the Christians and then he saw Jesus and then he fell down. So, and then the soldiers, when they want to arrest Jesus and Jesus said, I am, and then they also fell back. So in the presence of God, people can fall down when his presence is strong. When, when the presence is not so strong, people will sway. So we see people swaying slowly. And we ourselves too may feel the body swaying slowly. That comes from the presence of God. And then we, we help the person by saying, relax and love God more and you can feel the swaying stronger. So together with the swaying people, we experience the peace and love and joy and comfort or healing at the same time. So that helps us when we see the person swaying, we know that the person is open to the Holy Spirit. And we also can observe whether the person close, closes his eyes and is really concentrated in praying or he is looking around, he's not paying attention. We can see that and we can guide the person by saying, open your heart. Hunger for God. God is responding to you. God is right here. He wants to bless you. So we can guide people to believe what the Bible promised, that God will come to bless those who love Him and follow Him. And then the more people hunger for God, the stronger His presence. Now some people, I pray for them the first time they already, already experience the Holy Spirit very powerfully. Some people, I pray for them uh, it, much slower. Now, there was an experience, I, uh, I met a pastor and the pastor said that one of his members, uh, someone who went to his church, but actually the person has very weak faith, and he, his family put an idol of, Buddh of Buddhism in the home. And the moment that idol was put into her home, she started to see spirits evil spirits. And then she was out of control and they took her to the hospital. And I said to the pastor, I can go to the hospital and pray for her. And then when I went there, the doctor had said that because she was out of control, they will put her to the psychiatric ward the next day. But when I prayed for her, she, was, she became peaceful. I drove out the demons. At, at the beginning, she was totally out of control. And then I prayed for her, and then she was peaceful. And then later, uh, the family told me that the doctor now said that she has no problems. She can go home. So totally different. And then she had a friend, someone in the 20s, a young lady. And I actually, there are a number of friends there too. And I said, I can pray for all of you. Uh, to be protected from the evil spirit that was in the girl's uh, body before and now is driven out. And I can pray for you for protection. And they agree to that and I pray for all of them. <clears throat> and then when I come to this uh, lady, she experienced, she, her experience was very powerful. She was swaying powerfully and I said, the Holy Spirit is upon you. And then I said, the Holy Spirit is upon you. Open your heart to Him. And the moment she opened her heart, suddenly she started to laugh loudly. And that was in the hospital. Many people were walking by. And she was filled with the joy of the Lord. And she laughed for maybe about five minutes. And then after that, she started to cry very loudly. And for a long time, maybe for 20 minutes. And then after that, she was filled with the joy again. She was, she was laughing again. And afterwards, she told me what happened was 
because she had been hurt by people since her childhood. So when I pray for her, she experienced the joy of the Lord and then all the hurt feelings came out and then she cried. And then after that, her joy came out again. And then uh, afterwards, she, uh, she went to my church and then later she became a missionary. So this is one person whom I pray for instantly experienced a great change. And there are many people uh, like that too. There was uh, in South Africa, there was another lady. She experienced a great love of God and, and she was crying. And she said, wow, it's so wonderful to be in this heavenly realm. And uh, so I hope that we all want a, pres a strong presence of God. And the more we believe in God's love, the more we believe God is right here. God is blessing me. God wants to bless me. God is here. He, he wants to do great things in my life. The more we have faith, the more God will work in our life. It's not just shouting, it's faith. Lord, you're right here. Thank you, Lord. I love you. I worship you. I adore you. And then uh, there were many people who brought friends who are not Christians or meetings that they are non-Christians or bring Christians and I pray for them that experience the Holy Spirit and I lead them to Christ or lead them to, to love God and worship God and serve God. So I hope this would motivate you all to hunger for the work of the Holy Spirit and not to hunger, not to hunger for uh, just the power. We hunger for God. When God comes, the power will come. And also when we pray for people, we want to glorify God from our heart. We don't just say, oh, thank God, but in the heart we say, oh, I'm so powerful. But we want to say, Lord, it's you totally. It's not me. It's you totally. It's you. It's your work. Glory to God. And everyone should worship God. Everyone thank God for the wonderful work of God. So everyone would glorify God. And then they will. Uh, and God is pleased with that. But if we say, well, in our heart, we say, wow, see how powerful I am. Then we are drawing attention of people to us. So we want to glorify God and we want to bring people to follow God and love God and, and serve God and believe in God. When, when I bring someone to Jesus, to believe in Jesus, uh, when, I experience, when they experience the Holy Spirit, immediately I would tell them, I pray for you and then you uh, experience the power of God and you can pray for other people too. Do you want to be able to serve God and bless other people? And then they say yes. Then I say now you want to follow God and read the Bible and pray more and learn from your pastor, learn from the church so that you are filled with the Holy Spirit more and then you can be trained to pray for people so that they can experience the Holy Spirit. So I encourage people to uh, be willing to serve God even when they are converted, when I bring them to Jesus. Instantly I tell them, in the future when you love God, you can be filled with the Holy Spirit and you can serve God with power. So this is how I motivate more people to serve God. So I hope you all will say, Yes, Lord, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to serve God with the power of God. And I want to raise up people with the power of God so that they are transformed by the power of God so that they will have the motivation to serve God. So that is the purpose, that we raise up more people to serve God. It's not just us. It's not just saying, Okay, it, uh, it's, you have to come to me for prayer. We want to tell them, all of us can pray for you and then you can be healed. And the power of God will come to anyone who trusts in Him and have a close relationship with Him. Okay, right now I want to pray for all of you. I will invite you to stand up and relax yourself and raise up your hands to God and love God and worship God. And I pray for you, but uh, listen to my prayer so that you will learn to believe in God's love. Okay. And then when you ex have experienced anything, you can send me messages afterwards, not now, but send me messages afterwards. And also if you have questions, you can send me questions. So uh, in a few minutes after the prayer, then we have one hour break for lunch and then one hour later we'll come back. Uh, okay, so we all stand up and relax. Now for now, don't shout because you, I want you to hear my prayer and be guided by the prayer and to enter God's presence. 
Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord Jesus. We need you. We love you. We thank you. We are so, it's so wonderful to have you. We are so blessed to have you. It's wonderful to have you. God, you are so wonderful. You are loving God. You are God of blessings. You bless people. You are God who cares. You want to bless us. You want to help us. You want to bless all of us. You're, you're full of love and mercy and compassion. And you are also full of power. You, are, uh, you have the power and you give us the power through the Holy Spirit. Lord, we trust in you. We enjoy you. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, you are with us all the time. You are in front of us and behind us. You are laying your hand upon us so we can relax in you. We can enjoy you. Father, we enjoy you. We like you. Hallelujah. It's so wonderful to have you. And whenever we love you, when, whenever we adore you, you are happy with us and you are happy to bless us. You are happy to bless each one of us. Thank you, Jesus. You are happy to bless each one of us. We need you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We love you. We adore you. You are so wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We adore you. Jesus, I love you. I bow down. Before you worship and praise you, Lord our King, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Jesus, I love you. I bow down before you, worship and praise you and worship you. Lord our King, Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Oh Lord, help us all to really love you, adore you, we need you, we hold on to you, we hold on to you and we trust that you are right here now, we know that you are right here now, you want to bless us, we hunger for you, Lord Jesus, we hunger for you and we like you so much because everything you do is wonderful, you work in our life, you give us peace and love and joy and you move us to repent, you move us to trust in you and you work in our life and you never give us up and even when we have sinned, you continue to move in our heart to guide us back to you. Lord, we don't want to sin anymore. We want to repent of all, all our sins. We want to hate sins. We want to turn away from our sins and obey you totally. We want to spend long time loving you and adoring you. We want to spend long time in your presence. We need you, Lord Jesus. We need you. We want you. We hunger for you. We, we love you. We love you. And we want to serve you. We want to bring people to believe in you. We want to help people to experience the wonderful work of the Holy Spirit. We want to help people experience your peace and love and joy and healing. We want people to experience your freedom so that they will 
turn to Jesus and believe in Jesus and be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, we want to bring people to follow you. We want to be used by you. We want to serve you. Father, we thank you, thank you, thank you. We want, it's wonderful to have you. We enjoy you. We enjoy you. Now, when we say we enjoy you, think of oh, having the peace of God in us. We enjoy your presence. We think of the Holy Spirit coming from above. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts. Fill our soul. Fill us with your presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you. We like you. It's so wonderful to have you. We enjoy you so much. We enjoy you so much. It's so wonderful to have God. Oh Lord, fill us with the Holy Spirit. Transform our life. Transform our life. Change our life so that we hate sin. Change our life so that we love you. Change our life so that we, are, we dedicate our life to you. We dedicate our whole life to you. We want to follow you totally. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In